Hello, today is the 4th of July, 2012. It's really hot outside and I wish everyone a happy Independence Day. That's from the US. I just hit my 100 subscriber mark. Oh, somebody just hit 100 followers. Triple digits, I'm not gonna lie. Feels pretty good. Let's get to it. diagnostics for the purge solenoid. Step one, the first thing that you want to do is verify that you're getting vacuum from your throttle body to your purge solenoid. The easiest method that I have found is to just use a screwdriver and kind of push it off the end there. So now that we have access to that pipe, we will run the car, start the car, run the car, and see if we feel vacuum. Because this vacuum line is going to the front of the throttle body, so there should be good manifold vacuum coming from this you should get suction from here if you don't there might be a clog in this line and that line runs all the way up to the throttle body so you would have to inspect the line all the way from the throttle body all the way to that pipe you could do that by sticking a length of hose and actually blowing the opposite way because there's nothing that is stopping airflow from here to there it's just a suction line it's just a hole in the throttle body so you should get vacuum on that okay blow into this end and you should hear it come out the intake. If you get a long enough length of hose, you'll hear it over there. The important part is making sure that there's no clogs in that line so that you can get good vacuum to this point. That way you know your line is good up to this point. I can blow freely so I know that line does not have any restrictions. Let's just call that the end of step 1A. Step 1B is now making sure that you have vacuum. Okay, I'm just going to use a, a piece of hard paper here. Do not use a soft tissue like toilet paper because you don't want that possibly getting sucked in. Uh, use a hard paper like regular college rules, notebook, whatever. I can hear that there is suction and the paper is also getting sucked in there, so that's good. There's already a little bit of rust forming here, but if you have to deal with salt corrosion and stuff like that, you might want to inspect these pipes more often, maybe every 60 to 70,000 miles. Um, just for their integrity, so blow through them. That, that's a pretty good check, is just to blow through them. Now that we've confirmed that we have suction, and we can also blow in this line going both ways, that we know that there's no clogs in this second line, we want to confirm that this first line is good. Now since this is a switch and it's in the closed state, by default, you should not be getting any vacuum from here. So you unplug this line, and then put your finger on that port, and you should feel no vacuum while the car is running. If you feel vacuum, that means your switch is open, your purge solenoid is open, or it is otherwise faulty. You should feel no vacuum there. The only time you should feel vacuum there is when the switch is open. And we will get into diagnosing how you can tell if that switch is opening correctly while you have 12 volts to it and vacuum. This purge solenoid for the Mazda 626, Ford Probe, Ford Telstar, Mazda Protégé, Mazda MX-6, when fed 12 volts, the switch opens. Some cars are the opposite way. When you're fed 12 volts, the switch closes. And that's a big difference, and there are, both, there are pros and cons to doing it either way. It accomplishes the same thing, has a different duty cycle. There's really no right or wrong way to do it, it's just a different method. So that is your step number one in diagnosing the purge solenoid. And that's something you can do while the car is running without removing the purge solenoid. Uh, for the next test, you will need to remove the purge solenoid. Now in order to get to the purge solenoid, to take that off, it's on a bracket. You first have to take off your power steering line, fold that over your valve cover, and then go at the two 10 millimeter bolts holding down this entire bracket that's mounted to the side of the intake manifold. So let's do that. And now, that should be enough to get in here and get these mounting bracket bolts off. Okay, in order to get that 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom mounting bracket, you need a U-joint. So take your 10 millimeter socket, put it on your U-joint, and then on your ratchet, and that should be what you need to get it. Deal. 
Okay, well that's loose, so as long as it's loose you can get it with your fingers. This is real drama. That's why they're just subscribing. Yeah, that should be on TNT, huh? Isn't that their slogan, real drama? TNT knows drama. Yeah, there you go. The drama of the screw. Actually, that's kind of funny. The taming of the screw. You get the reference? Yeah, taming of the shrew. Mm. <laughs> that is kind of funny. <laughs> I was going to say it wasn't, but then I got it, so... Here's your purge solenoid, and you have to get this off, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding that onto that bracket. Now that you've unloosened this nut, purge solenoid will come right off of that bracket. And now you should be able to get a real good look at how those vacuum lines attach to the bottom. So this yellow dotted one is the one that goes up to the hard pipe, and that's coming from the charcoal canister, and then the one on the bottom goes to... Oh. Crap, it doesn't. Shit. Okay, I think I just found a problem that I've had for quite a while and I never noticed. My purge solenoid is going up to my fuel pressure regulator. Someone got these two short hoses swapped and you can see why. They're both short yellow dotted hoses. I'm gonna switch that, then we will continue the purge solenoid diagnostic. Oh, I don't wanna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess it up. Okay. I don't... I'll do it. If you're not comfortable, that's fine. Master. We're going to get my nephew Caleb to give it a try because I'm too weak and he's going to put his big collegiate muscles into it. I'm going to laugh if when we rehook this up your car just explodes into like a thousand. No, it's not going to explode. If anything, it'll stall. But if it does explode, I'm blaming you. And that is why I did not do that. <laughs> so it can't be blamed on me. You got them switched around? Yeah, very switched around. Okay, now we're going to start it up and see if it blows up. We know that it was not venting correctly. We are going to inspect the gas cap. One thing that you might have obviously noticed is that there is quite a lot of uh, mold. Now, this could be just mold, but it could also be a symptom of a bad purge solenoid. Figured out the problem with the vacuum hose. When I rebuilt the head, reinstall the intake manifold, I am the one that hooked these up incorrectly. That was actually my fault. The random mechanic out there that was I was blaming, that I was going to hurt, um, you're safe. In order to get this entire purge solenoid off, we have to remove these hoses again. Okay, here is your purge solenoid valve. Almost all cars in the US have very similar looking purge solenoid valves. That is because it's an electromagnetic switch and you have a vent and a vacuum line that goes off of them so there's really not a need to deviate from a proven design and this one I believe is probably going to end up being Mitsubishi because a Mazda 626 has a lot of Mitsubishi electronics so now that this is off you have two pins in here one is going to be your ground pin and the other is going to be a 12 volt signal and as we described in the previous video this solenoid is only powered when four conditions are met and it sent, then sent that 12 volt signal. Anything over 10.5 volts will activate this solenoid and will open and begin vent, uh, venting fuel vapor into the intake manifold. So we, what we are going to do is put 12 volts on, the, on that pin, ground the other pin, and listen for a click. Because it's electromagnetic, it will click. All solenoids, when fed voltage, click. So that's why when you turn on your car and you hear a whole bunch of clicking, those are all the solenoids activating. There you go. Now you do not want to cross your positive and your negatives. That would be bad, okay? Okay. Okay. In order to test this solenoid, while the solenoid is active, meaning once you have this jumpered, you will blow through this hose. That's why I have this long attached hose so I can blow through easy. And all I had was this three-way valve, so I have to stop this up while I do it. At a resting state, this solenoid is closed. So while you have it jumpered, the switch will open and you can blow through. It's the way that you test the solenoid, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I do not recommend that you try and remove these hoses without slicing them first with, let's say, an X-Acto knife. These uh, ports are prone to breaking. They are plastic. They are old, they are brittle, they will break. Slice them with an X-Acto knife and then peel these off the ends. I'm going to fold over this side, something like that. Just kind of squish it down in there. Make sure that no pins are touching 
and that's your solenoid clicking. And then blow through here. As long as that power is touching that pin, this valve will open. So something like that. There you go. This is working. There we go. All done. The second line actually runs up and gets vacuum, does not get vacuum from here. That's the PRC solenoid vacuum right there. The PERT solenoid vacuum actually runs up to the side of the throttle body and plugs into the side of the throttle body. So it's still getting manifold vacuum. Actually, everything from the MAF back should be getting manifold vacuum. So that's why it plugs into the throttle body. And that's why your throttle body vacuum is so important and why if you get a leak at your throttle body, that can mess up your vacuum system. And the same thing with your intake gasket, intake manifold gasket. If you blow the vacuum seal there or on your throttle body, it will mess up a solenoid. And just in case you were wondering, below that is your PRC solenoid and that goes to your fuel pressure regulator. And then there are two solenoids way back down there that are both related to the EGR. So those get plugged into the EGR vacuum system and stuff. And we'll get into those in a later date. For now, we're just gonna hook everything back up, button it back up, and uh, we're good to go. We have confirmed that this is a good purge solenoid. Now, if you have a bad purge solenoid, the only thing that you can do is replace it. And those things are kind of expensive. All the solenoids here are electromagnetic switches and those are somewhat expensive. They can run anywhere between 50 to $100, depending on availability and material used within the switches and stuff like that. Just there's some variables involved. And hope you learned a lot about your purge solenoid valve. Happy 4th of July. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the box below. I do try to respond to every single question that's posed. However, if the answer is too lengthy, I will refer you to Mazda626.net uh, in order to ask that question so that I can do a full write-up on your question so that everyone in the future will learn from all of this. Have a good one. Hope you learned a lot. Thanks for the 100 subscribers and thanks for the 100,000 views. Cool.